On this episode of This is Game Boy Light, we'll be dropping right into it. Hello everybody, welcome back to another brand new episode of This is Game Boy Light, the little in-between episode each month where either me or Peltic take on a subject, uh, some topic or um, one game in particular that we would love to talk about and this is actually the first time I'm talking about a game alone, like one game and not like a series of games or like uh, a game related topic or anything else. So this is new for me, um, so I hope I'll, I'll do this correctly. Um, but first of all, let's uh, talk a little bit about what I have been up to since our last episode. Um, I've been playing some Game Boy games, not that many. Um, I actually finished up Boxel 2 in about what 18 19 hours that's more than enough pushing boxes for me for sure um this would basically mark the end of me having to play boxel for my uh system challenge but sadly i do have do have i have lost the footage of when i did boxel one so eventually i'll have to play that game again but that is uh way 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 in the future so i'm not even gonna think about it and i'll just pretend that i'm done with boxel forever um besides that i played a super star wars return of the jedi um it's a port of the super nintendo game um it was pretty okay uh it's definitely easy to beat on the easy difficulty level um it provides you with all the levels in the game um if you do it on jedi difficulty however you do get a different ending um it's not much it's just an extra screen or something so it's totally not worth it because the game is not that great i mean i had fun with it but the later stages uh became very um weird uh very not that much fun compared to the first stages and also a little bit too difficult but yeah we beat the game that's all that matters um after that i played heavyweight championship boxing but i actually played the japanese version version just called boxing uh the reason for that is that the american release or the european release they messed something up uh for your opponent's stats which makes it almost impossible to actually beat the uh, last two guys in the uh, game um, on the Japanese game it's super easy to do so um, I can't really explain how it works it's kind of like punch out but not really um, there are like star punches and things like that but it's kind of hard to actually pin those down to knock your opponent out in one go but it is possible if you hit them with it uh, but yeah the american and european version their stamina bar goes up way too fast and they have a lot more hit points than they should have and that makes it semi um impossible to actually beat them especially because they can do star punches as well and if they hit you once with that you are also knocked out um you can only continue like two or three times i think and then you have to start the entire game over so yeah it's it's not that fun for those of you who are willing to play this game if you play the japanese version if you think the game is over it's not over um you have to wait for like a minute or a minute or two and then there's an extra fight and after that fight you actually get the credit so be prepared for that um same if you play the european or american version actually just be prepared that after the final guy there's still one more guy but the game takes a time to quote unquote load because game with games don't load of course um to actually start that fight so um, yeah keep that in mind uh besides that i have been playing link's awakening for switch i'm not going to be talking about that at all because we will do a complete episode about that um uh, possibly after the next one like the next one is going to be pingu but after that we're uh, gonna tackle link's awakening probably with uh, guest star hero because he has been playing it as well and it's like one of 
all our favorite games of all time uh, for the Game Boy for like me, Baltic and uh, Hero. So we'll be diving into that one. And I think it's a nice follow up to our episode about um, Froggy Game, um, like for the Frog and Bell stool, uh, because Hero was on that as well. And if you listen to that, you know that the basis of the engine of that game actually was used to make Link's Awakening later on. So it would be a nice follow-up to that. Um, and then there's one final game I played, which is uh, Bloodstained. Uh, I finally gave in and bought me a copy on PS4. Um, I did not want to buy this game at release because I'm not really that big of a fan of the art style of the game. Um, it's very off-putting to me, and that's why I didn't want to play it, but I heard so many great things about it, of the gameplay. Um, I checked out a few streams of, like, Enemy and Apati Cthulhu, uh, just to see what the game was about, and it looked amazing, and I can definitely tell it is amazing, you should definitely get that game. Um, I think it already sold enough so they can warrant a sequel in the future for sure, but... It is absolutely incredible. Uh, maybe I can recommend you get it on PC if you um, have problems with frame drops uh, and some other bugs that are only present on the PS4 or another console version. Like there's there's one thing where if you try to read some of the um, archives or books that the game just literally crashes on PS4. They have been trying to patch it, but so far they haven't been able to do so. Um, so when it comes to slowdown, there's actually only been a few problems in my head with it. Um, it's, it's on one of the towers. Um, it's like... The, the game zooms out so you have a bigger overview of the area and then it gets a little uh, degradation. Degradation? Is that, that is, I don't think that's a word, but now it is. Um, but yeah, the frames kind of drop, uh, the frame rate drops there a little bit. There was one boss fight near the end where it got absolutely crazy, but it might also have been because I had four familiars flying around me, plus um, another thing that, that's... It, uh, was flying around me so maybe it just couldn't handle that at all um, and sometimes when you are just entering a new area and you hit an enemy and it drops an item the game just freezes for a second but besides that for 95 percent of the time though the game plays perfectly fine on playstation 4 as well plus i have an old playstation 4 i don't have a pro so that might have something to do with it as well anyways that's all that i have been playing um i'm sure i have i will have played a lot more when we get back to our full episode so i'll talk about those things then but now let us dive into um like the game I'll be talking about today, which is Skate or Die, Bad and Rat. Before I start this, um, I do want to say, like, I absolutely love skateboarding video games. Um, it definitely started with the Tony Hawk series uh, when, when that first one came out. I think it amazed everybody how fun that was. And I played them up until American Wasteland, which I did not like because the levels kind of sucked. Um, and after that, I haven't uh, really touched the Tony Hawk game. Uh, probably for the best, because I have not heard many great things about those. But I've also played, like, uh, Treasure Skate and Destroy, a game made by Rockstar, and which was uh, basically um, the basis for EA's Skate series, um, which they, of course, screwed up in the end, because, well, it's still EA. And we'll be talking about EA in a little bit as well. Um, I also played like MTV skateboarding, grind session. Um, there's probably some more. I did not play the, the silly ones like the Disney skateboarding and things like that. I didn't do those. But like the more serious ones, if you can call Tony Hawk serious, I guess, um, I definitely have played them. And I may have talked about this during my episode where I just uh, basically introduced myself, talked about myself, but I have been skateboarding as well. Well, I'm not skateboarding anymore, but uh, I did so in the past, mostly because of the influence of the Tony Hawk uh, pro skater game the first one uh, but there was always a fascination for skateboarding i think it started with uh, police academy 4 uh, citizens on patrol i think that one is um, in the first scene uh, which stars uh, what's his name um 
can't come up with a comedian's name, the blonde guy. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't come up with his name right now. Well, he was in SNL and he, he had a few shows and whatever. Um, he was in there. Um, and actually the skating parts that you see, he, he was uh, portraying a skateboarder uh, together with a friend of his. But the actual skaters who did like the tricks and, and things like that was actually Tony Hawk. And I want to say... Lazek, but I'm not sure if it was like I, I know it was two professional skaters and Tony Hawk was one of them So yeah, but I always had a fascination at least for skateboarding. So uh, most of these games were right up my alley um, When it comes to skate or die, I did not get to know them until very much later because uh, I've had never heard of them before Anyways, let's dive into skate or die bat and rat <laughs> Welcome back everybody, hope you enjoyed that nice song from Skate or Die Bad and Red, the game which we will be talking about today. So this game came out in the US in 1990 and in 1991 in Europe. Um, it was developed by Konami, at least in, uh, in the US, and by Palcom in the EU. And if you don't know who Palcom is, um, you probably have heard about Ultra. Uh, which is basically a shell corporation made by Konami so that they could make more games than they were allowed to by N Nintendo in one year. So Ultra was the uh, the shell company in the US, Palcom, Pal, of course you already hear it, was the one in Europe. So yeah, this is just a Konami game and it just screams Konami all over it. Um, it's it's very easy to see that it was a game made by them. Um, the composer for uh, this game, uh, weirdly enough I could find it, was Hidehiro Funauchi and uh, together with K Noguchi, no idea what the K stands for, well it's probably his, his uh, well last name I guess in Japan, but um, He's all only credited as K, um, but Hidehiro Funuachi actually did a lot of games for Konami, well, the soundtrack at least, um, especially on Game Boy. Um, he was involved in Zen Intergalactic Ninja, um, which also came out on NES, I believe, so maybe he had something to do with that as well. Um, he did Tiny Toons Adventures, Babs Big Break, Blades of Steel, one of the best hockey games ever made, um, Castlevania 2, Belmont's Revenge, and Castlevania The Adventure, um, Operation C, which is, of course, Contra for Game Boy, Parodius, which everybody knows, the parody of Gradius, um, of course, Skate or Die, Bad and Red, like I said, and also Quart, the uh, Konami quote-unquote puzzle game. So yeah, he has done a lot of them, and yeah, pretty much all of them have amazing soundtracks, so congratulations to Hidehiro Funauchi. Funauchi? Yes, Funauchi. I think I said Funuachi earlier, but it's Funauchi. Um, so a little bit bit more talk about the actual Skate or Die franchise. Um, originally this was a game made by um, Electronic Arts, so even back then, because I think this was in 1988, they were already uh, going towards that skateboarding games market, so that's that's pretty cool to know. Um, it was a game released on systems like the Spectrum, Atari and things like that, and it was basically really just a skateboarding game. Um, it had five different events uh, which you could do. I have no idea what they are. Probably half pipe, uh, street, um, and then my knowledge is already gone basically because I don't know what else you can do. Um, but yeah, it was just a normal skateboarding game. Um, later it was ported to NES by Konami or Ultra. Uh, 
And it was basically the same game, but with some updated graphics or lesser graphics, depending on what console they actually uh, ported it from. Um, but yeah, it was also just like a normal skating game with, with some backyard half piping and things like that. So nothing really special about that. Um, later, EA made a sequel, Skate or Die 2, The Search for Double Trouble. And this was a completely different kind of game. Um, it was actually a... I would say beat em up, um, kind of in the style of Cuneo or River City Ransom, but you were of course on your skateboard, but you could buy like new trucks, new wheels, um, some healing items and things like that. Maybe you could even level up, I'm not sure anymore, but you're basically on the streets, in the sewers, in the on the beach, things like that, and you have to beat up uh, some ducks. And I think that's maybe where the inspiration for this game came from, um, because this game is completely made by Konami, uh, or Ultra, or Palcom, whatever. Um, well, I guess Konami and Palcom, because they could actually release this under the Konami name in, uh, in America. So, um, this is kind of based on that, but it's not really a beat em up. This game is actually more of a platformer, but more about that later. Um, after that, there was another game for Game Boy, actually called uh, Skater Die Tour the Trash. Um, trash with H R A S H, not, uh, not trash, but it is. It is kind of trash compared to uh, this game, at least. It's just a um, typical racing game, I guess you could call it, where you're, uh, where you see the back of your skater and you're going down like sewer drainages and things like that, trying to get to the goal in time. Uh, it's a very easy game. It has great music for every track, but sadly you can only hear like 20 seconds of it before it uh, goes into... The song it just plays for every stage, which is kind of sad because it definitely has some bangers in there, but you can sadly just not hear much of them. But yeah, that's not the game we're talking about, of course. Um, we are actually talking about Skate or Die, Bat and Rat. And I really wanted to talk about this game because it really came as a surprise to me how much I liked it uh, when it got picked. So um, yeah, let's... Uh, dive right into the game and of course before we can start i have to talk about the plot of this game so um it was a little bit hard to find the plot um luckily gran and hero did have a manual available um sadly the manual is completely in german um as i'm pretty familiar with german i could read it but there is a lot a lot a lot of words in this that are totally new to me and i even asked pld who lives in germany and he was like i have no idea what they're saying here this is written like complete garbo to be honest so um i kind of got the gist of it so i'll just tell the gist of it and um yeah let's just dive right into that i guess Hi dudes, my name is Unnamed Skater. I live in the amazing city of Vileville in a state confusion right next to California. This is the most radical place to get your skate on and is home to Ariel, daughter of the best bad and rat skateboarding master in the world. Lately, my tubular city has been terrorized by the evil Alrat, who ramped up the crime rate. He also kidnapped Ariel so that he can take the throne of the best skater ever, totally bogus. But he forgot I'm also here, Ariel's number one fan and boyfriend. I will take it upon myself to challenge Alra's evil training courses by grinding and flipping my way through them and save the day, proving that I am indeed the chosen one, the new bat and rat master of the world. No time for stalling, let's ollie right into it. So yeah, that's the that's the plot of this game, or at least what I could uh, could make up from it from from the manual. But yeah, it's it's nothing special. It's just like girl gets kidnapped, you have to go save her. Um, has some some skating stuff about it. Like <laughs> this is literally not the text that was in the manual. I just made something up myself from the words that I could understand. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, typical plot, um, doesn't really tell much about the game, I guess. So let's dive right into the gameplay. So this game, like I said before, is actually a platformer, which is um, 
kind of kind of a cool concept to be honest definitely back in that day because uh, nothing like that was done before um it's definitely not an auto scroller like you uh, might think because you're on a skateboard but of course you are on a skateboard you can't just get off it so um, you have to take in consideration that once you start going you also have to slow down you can't just uh, go and stop like like you would be able to do in a normal platforming game um, besides jumping you basically cannot do anything so you can only do an ollie and that's pretty much it um, there's no like grinding in this game there's no like doing kick flips or heel flips or varial flips or whatever flips you you want to do um, it's literally just jumping over pits jumping over enemies um, striking enemies with the front of your truck well, the, not the front of your truck, the front truck, my apologies. Um, or at least the middle of the board. Um, it's it's kind of weird how that works, but at least you have to jump on uh, some enemies to actually kill them. Most of them are just objects that you have to avoid so you don't take damage. So um, this game has seven levels in total. Um, it has four standard horizontal platforming levels. Um, those being the first stage, the third stage, the sixth stage and the seventh stage. So in those levels, you're just going from the left to the right, trying to avoid all the hazards, trying to not fall into a pit and getting to the end of the stage where you have to do a boss fight. Um, each stage has some checkpoints, um, only one, most of the, well, most of it, I think it's just one. So, um, it's kind of easy, of course, to uh, die a lot and then uh, having to restart the entire stage again, which is, uh, yeah, not, not the greatest, of course. Um, besides these uh, standard horizontal platformers, you also have three top-down vertical levels where you are at the top of the screen, rolling towards the bottom of the screen, um, and there's like ramps and things like that that you can take to avoid certain pits certain spikes certain enemies again and uh, of course your goal is to get to the finish line of those um so it already has some varied gameplay which is a really cool concept uh, it's nothing special it's nothing super new of course but the way they do it is definitely very very cool um the other thing about this game is that this is probably one of the hardest games I've ever played. Um, I made a joke about it when I was uh, doing uh, the actual streaming of it. I called it, oh, this is definitely the Dark Souls of skateboarding games because everybody loves that sentence, right? But it's it's pretty much true. Um, it definitely works in the same manner that you really, really have to learn the levels, you have to learn enemy placements, you have to to learn how to avoid them and overcome them so it has a very uh, steep learning curve for sure um, but it's also very satisfying when you actually get to beat a stage and, and it's it all becomes just muscle memory um, how to react to everything so that is pretty cool and I really love that style of gameplay I, like I really love the Dark Souls series I love very hard older games that uh, that literally have to teach you how to play the game um, because that is part of playing a video game for me like I don't just want to walk to the right and just finish the game or, or get help uh, around every corner no i want to learn how to actually use the mechanics of the game in my advantage so that i can overcome challenges um, it has to be done in a good way of course there's plenty of games that are completely unfair in that regard but this is not an unfair game this is just a really really hard game uh, what makes it so hard is that you only have three lives so um, once you blow through those, um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's gone. It's game over. It's back to the title screen. Luckily, this game kind of has a continue function. So I I find it kind of weird that the the game works like this. But um, so there's no continues in this game. But if you 
past the first stage, for example, and you go back to the title screen, you will see that you are automatically on stage two, so you can start from stage two. So a normal continue system would have been just fine as well, but for some reason they didn't do this. Um, you can only select the first four stages from the start though. So you have to beat the fourth stage to unlock the fifth stage and so on and so on until you get to the final stage. But even game overing on stage five means you have unlocked it. So it is there at the title screen so you can select it. Sadly, if you turn off your Game Boy, however, it's gone. So um, I would recommend doing this in one sitting, even though that will take you uh, a lot of hours. Uh, it took me four hours, which was pretty long, but also my estimate for it. Um, which is weird because this is only a 20 minute game or something like that, maybe even less. Um, so definitely be prepared for that. Maybe play it on an emulator or an EverDrive where you have a safe state so you can come back later to it. Just keep that in mind that uh, it does not save that progress. Maybe you can start from stage four all the time and just go to five. I didn't test that because I would just play it in, in basically one sitting, but I also used uh, the safe state on my EverDrive, of course. But um, yeah, just just keep that in mind if you're playing this game that it doesn't have an actual save function so um but yeah this is a really really great game um there are some problems with it though um so in some of the stages there are definitely some frame drops or at least input drops um in the earlier stages it's not that big of a problem because uh, most of the time you have enough time to react to things uh, definitely when you get to know them but i'll for an example i'll uh, go into stage six which in my opinion is the, the hardest stage in the entire game you have to do some quick decisions uh, going down a slope trying to avoid spikes um jumping ducking oh yeah i forgot to say you can actually also duck in this game but um so you have to do some jumping ducking jumping ducking in a very very fast uh, fast <clears throat> session i guess uh succession that's the word i was looking for um so the game can't handle that very well mostly because there's some animations tied to it which results in you Pressing the button, but nothing happening and you dying. Um, stage six took me a very, very long time. To, I think it's stage six at least. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> whatever. It's, it, you'll see it when you get there, I guess. But um, keep that in mind for sure. Like it frustrated me a little bit, but like I thought it was my controller not working. I tried a different controller, but uh, finally figured out, no, it's, it's really just the game. But after a while, you get so into it that it becomes second nature to get through that. You, you prepare yourself in your mind for those, uh, for those drops. And, and in the end, it works out just fine. Um, another problem is that the hitbox is weird in some places. Um, I'm going to give you one example because I'm sure everybody can get there at least. Um, in the first stage the first boss fight is against a clown which yeah yes you heard me right against a clown on a skateboard who is throwing juggling balls at you um you have to jump on those balls to like uh, make them bounce back towards him and hit him in the face so that you can actually um defeat him but for some reason at least I had this problem a lot, um, is that sometimes when you jump on the ball, you just get hit um, no matter what. Um, which is weird because at the very start of that half stage, because it gives you a checkpoint, they teach you how to jump on those balls immediately. And no matter how I jump on them, I actually always hit them. So no problem there. But then when you come to the boss, it doesn't work like that. And, and that gets really weird, so um, yeah, maybe you can't defeat the first boss like like I had as a problem. I think it took me half an hour to just get through stage one because of that. So uh, make sure you absolutely know how to jump on them, but even then it, uh, it might not work. Um, in other stages, um, there are some spikes that come out of the walls or spikes that you have to avoid on the ground, mostly in the vertical stages. Um, the hitboxes on those are like rather big compared to 
your sprite so sometimes you feel like yeah i haven't touched this thing at all and it still killed me yeah well that happens just uh, don't think of those spikes as a hitbox that are, is actually like triangular think of them as a very very big rectangle and and try to uh, keep away from them as as good as possible um what is uh what else is there in this game besides just well playing through it um, there are some pickups you can get there's ice creams that um, and pizza that give you uh, some of your life bar back you can only take like four or five hits before you die but you can uh, get some ice cream or pizza to restore your health pizza the best of course um, it restores half your health bar i think and ice cream only a quarter of it um, there's also some drinks you can pick up i'm not sure what they are of course um probably cola or, or pepsi or something like that um those get you extra points and if you get twenty thousand points you get an extra life um you won't be seeing those much of the time to be honest like getting a one-up is, is very rare unless you have to redo the same stage a few times and you get lucky enough that you get enough of those drinks to get to that 20,000 points. Um, there are actually one-ups in the stages as well. Um, not in all of them, only a few of the stages have one-ups in them. They are usually in places that if you would go for them you would die anyway, so most of the time it's not even worth going for them. Unless you really know how to uh, approach them and get them, then it might be very useful if you die. A little bit later then you at least got an extra chance but i wouldn't bother with them too much to be honest there's only two of them in the game that i feel like are in a good place that you can get easily and that's during stage five and stage six so maybe you can uh, pick those up but i would just let the other ones uh roll on by but yeah that's uh that's pretty much uh, the entire the entire game um like I mentioned in the first stage, you fight a clown. Um, each uh, each of the horizontal squirrels have a boss fight. Um, the second boss, I believe, is a diver. At least he looks like a diver. I'm not uh, exactly sure if he is. Let me grab the manual real quick. Maybe it actually says. Yeah, it's that. It's definitely a guy in a scuba suit. Like I can't read the German name of it. Like Mister Warzen Monster. But I, I have no idea what Vartzen is, so so I, I have no idea. Um, then there's... Uh, <laughs> okay, this one I can't read. I, I have no idea what the third guy is, but I guess it's like a ninja on a skateboard. Uh, but he's called Bionic Lester, apparently. <laughs> so so that's, the, that's the third boss. And then at the end, you actually fight uh, Alrat, of course. Alrat, the evil one, uh, who's a guy in a chair. He's the only one who's not on a skateboard, so he's a guy on a chair um, with two lion hats on the side and he's shooting fire at you. Look, it doesn't make any sense, okay, but it's it, it's just fun. It's just all out fun, so don't worry about it. Um, this stage is one of the longest stages in the game. Um, it takes like hmm, six, seven minutes to get through that stage, while the other ones are basically stages that take two minutes um, at best but of course like I said this is a really hard game so we'll spend a lot of time in each stage for sure but yeah that's uh, pretty much all I can say about the gameplay uh, let's dive into the cover art of this game it's it's actually pretty cool it's like very 90s style drawing I would say um, I'm looking at the European cover here uh, which uh, features a Gator with protection on. Always wear protection. Works it works in many cases. Um, but yeah, he's riding on one of those very uh I don't know what these are called actually, but it, it kinda looks like a fish deck, but it's not a fish deck, it looks like one of those plastic ones for little kids. So it's kind of weird. Uh but yeah, he's uh rolling down a cliff, jumping over a chasm with a snake coming out meanwhile there's a helicopter with a grappling hook trying to grab him and there's rubble coming down from the top of the mountain um that snake and that helicopter are actually in the game so i'm surprised they put that on the cover um besides that the european cover for some reason has a black 
bar across the screen at the top of the the top of the cover um besides that uh behind that not besides that behind that basically is just more of the uh of the mountain range because i looked at the american cover but there's you can't find one in a good quality that's why i put uh put the european one here but yeah there's nothing behind that uh so i i was thinking maybe there was something there that needed censoring in europe because um if you don't know, uh, Germany is um, very much responsible for all the uh, censoring for European video games. So, of course, you had like Return to Castle Wolfenstein with, with the swastika and things like that. That wasn't accepted back then. But they also didn't like guns like that. Um, well, guns were fine, but not if they were used by a human. That's why... Um, Contra, they changed it to Pro Protector, so it was a robot fighting other robots. Um, it's silly. Germany is silly. Just they're they're still doing things like that for video games. It, it's kind of surprising, actually. But uh, but yeah, I thought there was something behind that 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 needed censoring, but I can't see anything at least in the cover of the uh, U.S. version because it's so low quality maybe there is something behind it but uh, i i really doubt it to be honest but yeah it's a it's a pretty cool cover like if you would see that you would probably want to pick this game up so um and yeah you should because i i actually really love this game and i think everybody should uh, should definitely give it a try um that's pretty much all i can say about this game that's why i wanted to do a uh, a light episode on this um there, there's nothing much else to it so um hope i piqued your interest a little bit into checking it out if you'll really like really hard games um definitely do so and, and it's also a very original concept that uh, sadly doesn't get used anymore because uh after the second game boy game the entire series literally died besides uh there was also ski or die but that might have come in between but yeah this series doesn't exist anymore sadly um but yeah that's it for this game after the break i'll come back and uh, i'll do the outro and that would be it for this episode of this is game boy light be right back And here we are again. I forgot to mention something in the last part, which is of course the speedrunning section. There's not much to say about this. There actually is a task online which takes about 15 minutes and 9 seconds, but uh, there's no actual speedrun of this game. And I assume it is because this game is actually so hard. Like, getting a, a real run in in this game good luck like i would love to see it like i have been proven wrong in the past i think we talked about this during our wizards and warriors fortress of fear episode that it looked impossible to do but lo and behold atros and senkar roshi think uh, you pronounce his name have been diving into that game and now there's a sub 10 minute speed run of it i'm really excited for that it's still incredibly hard don't get me wrong but i i love it when when people dive into things like that and i i want to think that uh, i'm responsible for that because 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 of this podcast so yeah you're you're welcome world yeah but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much all I can say about this game. Um, normally, we also do listener questions, um, at least during, uh, during uh, game episodes. But sadly, I didn't get any questions. Um, I think not many people have played this game, so I, I doubt there would be very much interest in it before this podcast. So I hope uh, this sparks the fire within some people to, to actually... Uh, check this game out so that would be really great so yeah that's it for this episode like always you can find me on youtube twitter and twitch 
uh, slash Mule. That's M O E L L E U H. Uh, you can find my co host, who of course is not here, uh, under Baltic Gaming, um, at least on Twitter and on Twitch. Not on YouTube yet. Um, that, that still might take a while before he can claim that uh, personal URL. Um, you can find Lex as uh, Lex on on um, on the thingy on Discord. <laughs> That's the thingy I was looking for on Discord and sprinting Lex on uh, the Twitch and the Twitters. Um, or if you want it easier, like always, just go to our website, gbrunners.com slash T-I-G-B, uh, where you can just find links to all of our social media thingies. And that's a lot easier, of course, than typing in things in the uh, browser bar. That's, that's never fun. Never type things in there. Uh, unless you're looking for something in Google, I guess. Um, if you want to support this show, you can do that in two ways. We have a Patreon, which is Patreon slash this TIGB podcast, or this is game. No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Like all, see, I, I even I'm having trouble with all these links. So you can find a, a button on that on our website. You can just click that. You will go to our Patreon, where you can uh, become one of our patrons. Um, like we said before, we are trying to get to twenty dollars a month so we can do more live episodes. Because yeah, we need to uh, buy makeup and and things like that. Because otherwise, it's it's not a nice sight to see us live at all. Um, but if you just want to support us one time only, um, that's also possible. There is a PayPal, paypal.me, yeah, that's it, paypal.me button on our website as well. If you just want to want to donate a one time for something, um, you can definitely do that that way as well. Um, yeah, that's actually everything I can talk about for this episode. It's longer than I thought it would be. That's, uh, that's definitely surprising. Um, but yeah, I had actually fun doing the first time that I'm actually doing one game. So that was that was pretty fun. Hope you people enjoyed it as well. Let me know through whatever uh, channel you want to let me know. So <laughs> yeah, Discord, Twitter, YouTube, SoundCloud, whatever. Just contact me if you have any questions or suggestions. Um, with that, I am signing off and I will see you in two weeks. Well, not see you, but you will hear me and Baldic in two weeks for our full episode about Pingu. Newt Newt. Skate or die, bad and red. <clears throat> I actually don't have an opening sentence. Uh, <laughs> I should have written that down before I started. Um, hmm, think, think. Hmm. And I'm already using grinding and kicking and stalling. Oh my god. Um, why can't I come up with a freaking skate pun right now? Unbelievable. Um, whatever, I'll find something. On this episode of This Is Game Boy Light, we'll be dropping right into it. Sorry, that's the that's the best I could come up with.